Testing, testing. Audio seems good. Howdy, y'all. I sort of missed my uh, normal stream window tonight, but I'm still working on stuff. So I figured I would just do a late night stream and still catch it. So that's where we're at. That's what I'm doing. Listening to the Zelda trilogy by Game Chops again, because it is still the only music that I know for sure is not going to get me in trouble for copyright. I've been burned before. I have trauma. And so, still using it. I will figure out new music eventually, but I like it for now anyway, so it's all good. Working on the um, Gohan illustration again. Puddle Han, Gohan. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but I actually did a lot of work on this. I built up a bunch of reference and some uh, other stuff. I'll be showing that process at some point. But basically, I have a nice reference for how I'm going to paint this. And uh, I'm going to draw over it to touch it up a little bit. I've done a little bit of indication of that already. But I'm going to uh, tighten it up a bit. And uh, I think it'll be better for it. And it'll help the painting process go smoothly. Because I just want to change some of these uh, bits and pieces. I also added these like flares. Um, oh, I don't have a drawing layer even ready yet. Let's see here. Character 2. Go hand. Yeah, so these you know these white flares that are everywhere those are gonna be because I saw in my reference there's when the androids attack Gohan and they use energy waves there's a lot of that they have that especially in that last fight and I thought it looked cool and I thought it would add some uh, interest to the piece and it kind of plays with the metaphor of him being trapped by them because he's kind of caught within it sort of one of those is gonna they're gonna be like going behind the characters and in front of the characters in places right now I just have them roughly laid out but I think it draws into the piece helps the view draw into the piece still maybe better than before and uh, it definitely adds visual interest looks cool so I'm gonna be doing that but for the time being I'm gonna shut those off I think or maybe at least very much take them down in opacity so that I can draw over these characters and get something a little bit more what you call it um, dialed in feel free to ask me questions or call me names in the comments it's all good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get started here with Gohan. I think I'm gonna lower the opacity for these characters too, obviously, so I can very clearly kind of see what I'm doing, but still see where everything roughly is as I planned it out. And I'll probably tone down this overlay a little bit too. Yeah. So yeah, now I have this solid reference that I'm working from. Which is a pretty standard, like, modern way to do reference. Um, I'm being a little bit purposely coy about it. I'll bring it up next time. Oh, hey, Everett. <laughs> nice to see you in the comments. Hey, thanks, man. And no worries. That's perfect for streaming. You can be as goblin as you want. Yeah, 
let's see here. Yeah, so I like the angle of his face. I'm gonna keep that for sure. And I'm gonna make sure. So I think I didn't quite give enough um, volume to like his neck and his back here, so I'm gonna work on that. And then uh, generally it's okay, but it's a little, it could be better. Which layer am I on here? Oh, wrong layer, that's the problem. Yeah, so. Let's see, and I'm looking at this as I go. Yeah, and I've got reference for Gohan too. I gotta remember that because I want him to be accurate to the character, reasonably so. This particular Gohan has got a very specific look. sure that matches because like the way his hair is angled and stuff is very specific like even his sideburns and everything Yeah, and I think I like pretty much the way I laid out the hair, but I think he has sort of a, um, it might be a little bit more choppy, is all. Where's that one reference? There it is. Yeah, it sort of depends on the angle you see it from, but from some angles it's very choppy. So I might play with that, we'll see how that goes. Almost like it was just cut real starkly there in one spot. It looks kind of cool. And then... Yeah, this might be kind of a boring stream because <laughs> it's hard for me to talk still about like other stuff while I'm doing like really drawing heavy stuff. Drawing and talking about other stuff is kind of difficult. If I'm just kind of thinking out loud, it's easier. But like, it's hard for me to like tell a story or talk about something else <laughs> and concentrate at the same time with heavy drawing. Once I start rendering, I'll be able to talk about whatever. The streams will probably be less boring then, but... Also want to get back to animating those JRPG characters. Hello, Borger. Nice to see you again. I do. You were the one interrogating me about my life. <laughs> Just kidding. Just asking questions. It was cool. Yeah, I was very happy when uh, I checked out my, um, I was looking at the views for these streams and, you know, I've just really just getting going streaming, so they're low, which is to be expected. But when I checked out my views for my uh, Mega Man X uh, FPS devlog, they're actually, uh, they like octupled. It's crazy. They went from like 400 to like 3.2 thousand or something, which is pretty cool. I think that's because of the streaming. So that's super nice to see, because that was kind of what I heard like YouTube with like the streaming. It kind of gets more, like making YouTube videos outside of streaming will get more traffic to your stream, and doing streams is supposed to get more traffic to your videos too. So, it's cool to see that that's kind of working out. And I want to go back and keep working on that 
game. It was really fun to work on. I just kind of shelved it for a while because I had other things to get done. But if it's if people like it, I'll keep doing that. That's cool. And we'll get to learn more Unreal stuff. Which was loads of fun. I'm debating, maybe next time I'll put my uh, reference on the um, screen capture so people can see what I'm looking at while I'm like just looking for stuff because sometimes there'll be a minute where I'm looking through my photos. It's probably not that big a deal but it might be nice, I'm not sure. I would have to keep clicking in and out of it though, right now I have it on a different computer so it doesn't get in the way at all or anything and I'm just drawing on my laptop for the stream but it might be good if people could like get a sense of what I'm looking at too Borger asks something like in, the, in like the corner yeah kinda just like off to the side or um I guess if I if I had it on screen, I would probably just extend the canvas and just have like a page of it over to the side so that it's just always up and I could just scooch over to look at it. That would probably be the best way. Or I could just pop it up and down. I guess either way is fine. That'd probably be better actually, just keep it in pure ref. But yeah, it's just reference so that I know like what Gohan looks like and stuff. If you've never used reference uh, for drawing and stuff before, that's just kind of what it is. Stuff like that. For characters or poses or uh, anatomy details, sometimes even if you're trying to render a certain way, you might keep a certain kind of a painting to the side and kind of look at it like for a little bit of a guide on, like, to guide your rendering a little bit. Yeah, I think this silhouette is generally working. The only thing is I might bring this one down a tad. going in the window a little more maybe these little bits <laughs> yeah I think some people might like to see the ref that might be useful to some people who are watching could be I'll probably try it next time tomorrow This one, maybe I'll do it like more sweeping or swooping around this way or something. That could work, yeah. I don't want it to cut off the eye too much, though, so. or create a tangent. Actually, he's only really got one sticking out on that side, and it's kind of wide. So maybe I'll just make it a little bit thicker, like that. And then I won't do that last one that was over there. Because so that shows kind of that shape of his uh, line up there, which is pretty unique. 
and it sells the character I think a bit if you recognize it let's see there's a really good example like that yeah Yeah, for this one I'm definitely trying to keep it pretty true to the Toriyama designs. I get, uh, not completely, like it'll have a little bit of my own influence in there for sure too. But um, I want to keep it, all the proportions and things pretty accurate to that, and then just render it kind of uh, realistically. Or uh, maybe a bit stylized, but just more than you would see, obviously, if it was like cell shaded for the cartoon. But yeah, generally kind of keeping those proportions is the idea. And seeing if I can make that look cool with like realistic rendering. Oh yeah, that's like a perfect reference. I should have been looking at that all along. It's like the best one. Yeah, it's different, so this doesn't read right, so I gotta fix that. Because this is coming out so much that it would be more like... Something like this, probably. Borger says, forgot to ask this very important question last time. Sure, shoot. Whatever you want to know. Maybe that one could be blowing a bit this way too if those ones are that looks good nah I'm gonna keep that one back that looks better somehow uh, very very important question from Borger what's your favorite color yeah, it's a tricky one. I don't know if I really have a favorite color anymore. I think it was blue when I was younger. Maybe, uh... I think I went through like most of the colors when I was younger. I think I liked red for a while and then I liked blue. What's your favorite color, Borger? It's an even more important question. Definitely gonna get in the way of that eye. Cyan? Oh, that's a good choice, actually. I remember uh, in uh, the original Star Wars, Episode 4, Luke's lightsaber is actually kind of a cyan color. It's more that than blue. And I always thought that looked really cool. In the Super Nintendo game, they made it that way. How fast can an African soul fly with the full coconut? <laughs> Is that a Monty Python thing? I have no idea. You thought he was doing a Monty Python? I'm not sure. I don't get that reference. I never saw Monty Python. I've seen like clips, and I always thought the clips were really funny, but I just never watched it. Just missed that one. 
I've seen a lot of the clips though. I know like the Tis But a Scratch and some of the classic ones. What is your quest? <laughs> yeah, I've heard good things. I'm not sure what you mean by what is your quest. Oh, <laughs> that's a reference, I see. Are you here to save the world? Is that That's a Monty Python reference, right? Or something? I see, I see. Should watch it. Me and my brother once did a King Arthur and Patsy, Borger says, for Renaissance Fair. That sounds cool. That's another thing I haven't done. I've never been to a Ren Fair. That's a crazy thing to even say. That's like such a com common thing. I've always wanted to go to one, but I've just never done it. A lot of stuff like that. Turkey legs, yeah, I've had that. I've had that at the fair, but at the regular fair, but like the county fair. But I've never been to Ren Fair. I know that's a popular thing there too. Man, the freaking I love Dragon Ball Z and all that. Every time I try to draw eyes like Toriyama, it drives me crazy. The proportions of the face <laughs> that he does are so weird. It is so irritating to me. It takes me forever to figure out how to make it look not stupid. Renfair does turkey legs better. I'll have to take a word for it till I try it myself. job blocking this in in the initial drawing because this is gonna take some doing to get right it is not correct do they do the bacon wrap turkey legs at the ren fair i think i've had that at the uh regular fair those are very good very kitschy stuff but it works And the mouths are so close to the nose, it's like the upper lip doesn't exist. It's really hard to like do that and make it feel right. Yeah, 
Yeah, this kind of slips from the eyebrows and it just follows that line. It's weird. Something like that. I know I'm gonna have to redraw this many times to get it right. Wow, yeah, that sounds really good. The guy from um, from Breaking Bad who played the Walter White's brother-in-law, Hank, the DEA agent, that dude has his own uh, barbecue place that he opened in California that's supposed to be like straight up Texas style barbecue in California. I really wanna try that. It sounds so good. I've never had Texas style barbecue, but I've heard the stories. It sounds amazing. It's like the only reason I want to go to Texas. And to watch Kill Tony. That too. That'd be cool. I wonder how much tickets are. Yeah, they're getting there. Yeah, Texas style barbecue is legendary. It's like where they cook it to where like it melts in your mouth, like the brisket and all that stuff. And like they smoke it overnight for like 12 hours, the ribs and it, everything just falls off the bone. It sounds amazing. But yeah, allegedly he opened one in California that's very similar. So. I gotta try me that at some point. I forgot which city it is in, or what it's called. That's about right, yeah. Maybe it's still a little long face, but. We'll see. It looks okay for the moment. And then that other eye is going to be super tiny. Could probably get away with kind of not drawing it as a stylistic thing, but let's see if I can make it look okay. Oh. Whoa. Clip Studio. What's well, going down? Whoa. My computer just like, uh, I don't know what that was. Had a moment. Okay, seems better now. That worries me anytime something like that happens, it's like a sign. Knock on wood. I don't want to buy a new laptop. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I see. That should all be moved back a bit. That help 
helps a little. It's also too long, I think. Just a smidge. Yeah, I think that's better. This song always makes me want to play King Tears of the Kingdom. Is it Terrytown? I think. Or a different city? Can't remember. <laughs> yeah, an old laptop can be a problem. You gotta be careful. They do seem to have a uh, certain lifespan of usefulness. I'm actually amazed that this one has lasted me as long as it has. I thought for sure it would die in like a couple years. Because it's like a specialty thing. But I've had it for... Since... Uh, since 2009. I've had it for five years now and it still works. Hasn't died on me yet. It's kind of amazing. Knock on wood again. That can't be the right place for that eye. Pupil. Iris, whatever. Oh my gosh, again? See, the laptop knows I'm talking about it. <clears throat> That's no good. but I'm just gonna leave it for now. It's gonna bug me. I'll figure that out later. Can't get stuck on tiny little details like that for too long. <clears throat> Could noodle with stuff like that forever and still not get it right. Sometimes you just gotta move on. Come back to things. It's gonna be a strange angle. I think it'll work though. If anything, maybe I will forego the Toriyama style if I don't like it by the end of the drawing. And I'll just kind of redraw the faces to be a little more like what I would normally draw. Or a mix of the two. Yeah, the fan's loud. It's not a Dell though. It's a, uh, it's an HP actually. But it's a, it's a weird laptop that, um, it's kind of also like a tablet, and you can draw on it, and it's got Wacom Pen technology. It's like made for drawing. It's sort of like, I think HP made it to be a competitor to the Mobile Studio Pro, and uh, they don't even make them anymore. So. I really like the thing, but yeah, the fan can get kind of loud. It actually sounds way worse just because the mic is right behind the laptop. It's actually not that bad in person, but it, it gets kind of loud.
Mm, and then this should come to meet the forehead more. It's probably going to be like right there. Makes more sense. I think. Maybe? Maybe not. We'll see. Alright, keep going. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna move to my other arm. Let's look at this uh, shoulder. Let's see what I'm doing here. Yeah, so I kind of plotted it out. Good to know. Yeah, I worry that the fan kind of bugs people sometimes. Because I noticed one time it was really loud on the mic and I kind of lowered the mic. And then someone said it was too quiet after that, so I had to put it back to how it was. I don't think it, it's too bad, though. When I check it on the tests, you can't hear the fan too much. I mean, you can hear it, but it's not like, uh, it's not like covering up my voice or the music or anything. So, eventually I'm going to get a better mic with like a pop filter. This one's just a snowball. It's just bare. So that's part of the problem too. For sure. <laughs> Adds to the ambiance, yeah. Good way to think about it. here so it's not so low anymore and then that crease will definitely move up and it does kind of fold down from the bicep so it'll be more like this I think and that forearm is going to take up a lot more space than it initially did and so if that's there then the wristband will probably be somewhere right here probably <clears throat> Something like that. But it's foreshortened, so it's like gonna be a little bit more like this.
don't think the hand would be that chunky. Is it going to be kind of... Oh, I know why. Yeah, because that model. Okay. So I'll bring that down a little bit. But keep the spirit of it. Yeah, that's the other thing. So if the wrist overlaps there... Yeah, actually it would be coming out of here. And then it would be like this. Exaggerated, but it looks cool. It's kind of like Street Fighter or something. Just big old mitts. Okay. Oh, it's actually so close there that it's covered. So. Maybe. That looks good. Go for it. Thanks, Borger. Hello, address uh, Lauf. Buen dibujo. Sorry, I don't speak whatever that is. It might be Spanish. I'm not sure. Thanks for checking out the stream. Yeah, and I'll bring that down a little bit like that. Probably wouldn't show that much. figure out some of the forms going on in this arm which is both kind of we're kind of looking down at it and it's also kind of foreshortened it's obviously super exaggerated it's like a super chonky arm I might adjust that a bit but I think that's what I'm going for here this shoulders really so like this shoulder it's taking up all that space and then there's gonna be Future Gohan's uh, blue undershirt, whatever that is, has like longer sleeves than Goku's. So it's going to cover a lot of that upper arm. So I'm going to start with that to kind of get that line in to get a sense for the big forms. as curved as you'd expect because it is we're looking down at it a little bit and it's also morphing a bit it's not perfectly cylindrical because it's a shirt it gets stretched and pulled and everything so I'm gonna just use it as a tool to best describe this form in a way that makes sense oh it's Spanish for good drawing thanks Borger it's useful <laughs> I should have taken Spanish. Well, thank you, Address. And thanks, Burger. Something more like that, I think. And you know what, just for the hell of it, I'm going to pull this elbow out more because I just feel like it'll look cooler. Dang, this clip is really chugging, man. I don't know why it's doing that. Usually clip's pretty good. I hope I'm not, uh, my memory might be filling up on this computer. Maybe that's why it's doing that. That's not good. 
I'll have to figure that out. I thought I just cleared stuff out recently. Shouldn't be too bad. So, what was I doing? The elbow. Let's see here. Yeah. Give it a little bit more of an angular quality here. I was looking at uh, some of Dave Finch's drawings earlier to get some of that, you know, energy into my head a little bit. And uh, I don't do the super angular stuff a lot. And his work is so angular and it looks so cool. It's definitely like a Bridgman kind of a thing. So I think that's very fitting for this particular picture. So I might try to do a little bit more of that than I'm used to. Might take some finagling to get it right. And then that's the silhouette inside. And then we're going to have this other part up here. And finally, somewhere that bicep is going to be pushing out a little bit still. Not quite like that though. More subtle. Because that's going to be important for how that reads. So it's important that I kind of get the gist of this correct. Uh... track. Is that rotating enough? Oh, it might be over more actually. Yeah, I forgot how far, because we're seeing a lot of this back side of the arm, so you wouldn't see quite as much of that. It would def definitely be more like there. Makes more sense. And then you're going to get this big I always forget what this is. Is it the brachioradialis? This big muscle that goes up there? Something like that. And you're going to get those forearm muscles wrapping down. And that ulna would be right there. But it's covered by the wristband. So you're just going to see. Oh, I see, I see. And we're going to have the bone popping out more. Yeah, okay. That's cool. So that meets, in my reference, that meets this more. So maybe split the difference there. Have this come up more, have this come down more. Yeah, so at this point, I'm sort of modeling out what these muscles are going to be because that's going to help me when I paint it just to have little indications this won't be a line drawing this will be well I might incorporate some line in it um, but my plan is to lose all or most of the line maybe I'll keep it in as a stylistic thing and maybe not I haven't quite decided that yet I'm not planning on it though but yeah this will be a painting and there won't be any line left when I'm done but these, that's why these lines are not like, uh, they're not going to be super stylish or anything. I'm just going to paint over them anyway. Yeah, it's just to get the idea so that when I'm painting I'm not totally lost. Make a good plan ahead of time so I don't have to think so much. <laughs> I'm not good at like thinking about a bunch of things at once. You definitely know that if you've watched my streams before. Yeah, and this is getting a big fold here. From all that tension. So don't forget that. This has got to be like... Probably. But then it flattens out because of the bulging of the muscle back there so it's really only going to be like something like that maybe that might be kind of tricky to figure out 
and then this pulls back more, I think. Right? Yeah. Because it doesn't end there, so that's a mistake. Okay, moving along this part, and then I'm going to define this inner part of the elbow up here. Where that. That's not quite right. Where it flushes into the meat of that upper arm. Or, uh. That muscle that sits on top of the elbow there. Yeah, it follows it more though. It's more like this, probably. And then the elbow, if you want to play it up, you could probably like put the angle right there. Maybe? A little better. Oh! I don't think I did that right. It doesn't look right. It would be more turn. Oh, because this is the end, isn't it? Isn't that what I indicated? So this whole thing is the back part. That makes more sense. And then this is the bone that follows through. And that's why this fleshy part sits up there like that. And kind of meets it. Oh, and it bulges out again, yeah. For that muscle, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely gonna get some wrinkles down here where that's pulling. I'm trying to keep in mind to keep things angular. And to not overdo the wrinkles. Yeah, and then this part of the shirt got way too thick, so it would be more like... Yeah, what did I... I guess it would fall more down and then just go up like this. And that would make more sense than what I had there. It looked really poofy. It's not quite right. So then I wanted to lower his belt line slightly, probably more like to and flatten it a bit because you're not going to look down on it that much. Thinking of more of the long lens, so maybe something like if his body's turning that way. Yeah, angling down slightly and evening out up here. Maybe something like this. Oh no, it would be lower still, actually. Yeah, I know why. Because I lowered that whole part. Okay. Yeah, that's more like what I was thinking. Something like that. And then 
that'll wrap the shoulder here. Up this way. Somewhere more like right up here. Right? <laughs> yeah, slowly but surely. All coming together. Definitely takes uh, patience. Especially when you start painting. Every painting looks like crap at the beginning and you just gotta have faith that you're gonna be able to turn it into less crap as you go. Otherwise you'll go crazy and you'll just quit. <laughs> There's definitely an element of faith. patience. Yeah, that is shaping up to be more the proportions that I wanted for sure. So we're in, moving in the right direction. How long have I been on? 58? Yeah, I'll stay on for a little while longer yet. Then I'll get off maybe in like 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see. And I'll be back on again tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow I'm probably going to do closer to 7. Maybe 7.30. That's the usual time. Tonight I went later. Seems alright though. Seems like still getting people coming in and checking it out. So maybe I'll do some later from now on too. Yeah, YouTube has like specific guidelines that it suggests for, you know, times you should stream and stuff like that, so I try to stick to those, but, you know, different people will fil filter in at different times for sure, depending on when you're doing stuff. Get rid of that. Bring it down. Bring that out a little bit, because that'll be like this. Probably something like that. Okay. Let's block this ear in. Maybe I should see how. Look at some reference. See how what Toriyama. I think he does certain shapes for his ears. I'm trying to stick to him, so I want to make sure. I think that's what it is, generally. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. It's like maybe a little lower here. It's almost a bit like elf ears or something. It's a bit pointy. not bad. It's coming along. Oh, you know what I totally forgot? That I didn't have in my reference or in my uh, other thing? I'll have to look up a reference for that. I forgot Gohan has the uh, turtle emblem on his back. The big turtle emblem. 
I don't want to miss that. I was looking at some reference here. I just noticed that. I wasn't even thinking about it. Let's see. I think that's the turtle emblem. It wouldn't be King Kai's. Yeah, King Kai's is different. I'll have to make sure I get a really solid reference for that so I don't mess that up. But yeah, I, I can see the gist of it. Okay, so if my folds are doing what they're doing, I actually have it kind of set up perfectly to put that emblem on there. That was lucky. It rides up pretty high too. That's higher than I thought it would be. Is that just under the neckline? I need another reference. Hmm. I'll just block it in for now on another layer. And if it's wrong, I'll fix it tomorrow. Let's see. doesn't extend quite that far, does it? Let's see. It's pretty big. Oh no, it doesn't. It's definitely a little more compressed than that. So maybe like here. And here. Yeah, it'll be something like that. That's basically how it's placed, I think. Should it be more compressed from the angle? Maybe a little. Let's see. Centered, I think, for that angle. Yeah, probably somewhere like that. Moving on. Oh, yeah, back to my other reference. Veronica Cisneros says, you draw better than me. Is that true? I'm not sure I believe you. Even if it is true, you could always just draw more and get better than me. There's nothing stopping you.
<laughs> Borger says, can't confirm he dropped better than me and always will affect. That is not true. You can definitely catch up and drop better than me if you want to. I don't draw that good. It's definitely doable. Just takes practice. You guys are so hard on yourselves. Come on now. do a lot of iteration too to hide the fact that I can't really draw that well. <laughs> like I'll draw something and then I'll draw on top of it until it's better and then I'll do it again until it's better. There's a lot of that for sure. Redrawing something is one of the quickest way to learn that uh, actually. It's called uh, iterative drawing practice. Like drawing a figure, like looking at a figure and then putting the reference away and trying to draw it from imagination. Then when you're done, you'll pull out the reference again and you try to remember as much as you can what you made mistakes on and then correct it in your mind and then put the reference again and then away and then do it again. That's a great way to learn. That's what I've been doing lately, those kinds of exercises. strengthens the mind a little bit your uh, visual memory or whatever they call it visual library what happens if I turn off the silhouette for a second where is it Yeah, I like how that's coming along. He looks a bit Street Fighter-ish. He's nice and chonky. <laughs> Another great tip from a pro. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad I could help. I don't know how pro I am, but uh, glad I could help. some of those inside shapes and then I'll probably call it a night for this particular stream let me get that reference back oh it's cut off at the top so I'll have to use something else I can kind of see what it's doing though because it's got that one shape coming up from here I could probably wing it does that go back behind oh it goes behind another one okay so that makes sense. Something like that. Let's see if we could find another example. Yeah, yeah. And then this will be. Kind of gets shorter after that on the sides. It's a cool haircut. I wish my hair did that. So sick.
Mm, and yeah, and then on that back and the side, those are, it gets real tight to the skin almost. It's almost like a fade. So that's probably right. Yeah, I feel like this is going to wind up being a combination of sort of me and Toriyama style. I don't think I'm going to keep the face quite that Toriyama looking, but for now I'll leave it. We'll see how I feel about it. Maybe I will, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Probably when I look at it tomorrow I'll be fine with it. I don't want to keep it up the way it is. Oh yeah, and he has a scar on the le uh, left cheek. That's cool. If I had realized that I could have posed him the other way, that would have been cool to have it on this side. Not really going to see as much of it on that side. I guess I could just, you know, put it on this side anyway. No one's going to notice. <laughs> It'll look cooler that way. Yeah, I might do that. And then, uh... Yeah. So would you see much of that neck muscle bulging, or would it be kind of flat? I guess you might see some. This trap is going to cover a lot right there. So you're basically just going to see what's there. Yeah. And then this feeds up. Seventh cervical vertebrae is right about there, I think. And it's not bad. It's a good start for cleaning these uh, figures up. Yeah, it's looking decent. Cool. So I will be back tomorrow. Um, probably, like I said, closer to seven, seven thirty. That's the time I usually aim for. Although this went pretty well. A lot of people tuned in, so maybe I'll keep it... I know, Aura. To see if it still is good, and then... I'll adjust based on that. Uh-oh. Oh no, that happened last time.